Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In this video, we are going to cover some very basic stair layout. That's really not the point of this video. More specifically, the point of this video is how to cut the stairs themselves, the stringers, efficiently. So you notice I have two by 12 there. I have eight pieces okay, what else do I and I want to I want to show you the most efficient way that I have found to date to cut them and it is still a lot of cutting let me just tell you that Okay, so here's how I do this. I know I measured yesterday, divided, I have 16 rises. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, of course, is the very top of the floor joist, top of the subfloor. Now, based on what I knew over there with the stairs, I counted seven coming down from the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, draw that line. That means platform, draw that line. The remainder, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Draw that. So basement slab, platform, the rim or the upper floor joist, and then of course, top of floor. Our wall height is 102 and an eighth, plus 11 and seven eighths joist, plus our subfloor, 114, 12, divided by 16, seven and three sixteenths rise. Now what I'm gonna do, so I have all of my two by 12, and I find one that's pretty straight. That ain't it. This block I don't really need. Seven and three sixteenths, not three tenths. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, I'm gonna do my layout. So I'm gonna crown everything toward me, and I'm gonna go three pieces, because I'm using five inch screws. I'm going to basically make a glue lamb on its side. I don't really care. They don't have to be crazy. The underside's going to get drywalled, and the top's mostly getting cut out. Strong tie, SDWS. two of these in, then I'm gonna gang three more. Okay, okay, I'm gonna go three more. Again, crown that way. Okay, not bad. I don't know if it's clear in the video. Bottom three pieces, I put a five inch screw in, then I go three more pieces, two more five inch screws. That clamps six pieces total together. Then I'm gonna put the top two on because I need eight. Same thing, two more screws. All of those holes are gonna help me later to align things as I take them apart to finish the cutting. I'm never gonna dance again. <clears throat> Guilty feelings got no rhythm. Should've known better than to treat a friend. Okay, so that five inch just barely bites into the lower one, but it does well enough. So the side that's away from me or closer to you, the viewer, I want that to be nice and smooth because that represents the drywall. The outside, the crown, the ugliness, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna cut all of that out. Seems so loud. Baby, it's better this way. Well, maybe. So I got a crack right down the middle. I don't want to use that guy. That's why I always order a couple extras. Wasted chance that I've been given.
Should have known better than to cheat a friend. A wasted chance that I've been given. All right, so these are not the prettiest. I want that guy on top. We're gonna go with a 10 inch, 10 inch run, nice and tight. Seven and three sixteenths. 114 and three quarters divided by 16. I'm gonna say rise, 10 inch run, diagonal 12 and five. I'm gonna save that and add it to itself. So 12 and five sixteenths plus recall memory, 24 and five eighths. This will keep track of any accumulated error. 36 and 15 sixteenths, 49 and a quarter, 61, six one and a half, go a little far, 73, 13, 86 and an eighth, 86, two, 98 and seven, 98 and seven. That keeps track of any accumulated error, of which I think there's probably none. Okay, so what we just did is we laid out the quote unquote points, or where the vertical riser mark meets the horizontal tread mark. Now by laying those out and letting the calculator do the work, it keeps track of any rounding errors, you know, because you're, you're calculating out to decimal places. And that means that every single point is dead on the money. My goal is not to break a speed record, on any single move, but rather make up speed with good techniques. Now you could just as easily put stair gauges on like I'm showing here and go ahead and step it off and you will be close enough for the vast majority of stairs. I like to do this, it's just an exercise in accuracy. Yeah, I can't really justify it any other way. I think it's good practice, but really, does it, does it really matter on a carpet grade scare? Stair? Scare? See how reasonable I'm getting in my old age? Just gotta know when it matters and when it don't matter. You gotta know when to fold them. Know when to hold them. Know when it matters. I'm gonna scribe it through this way. Scribing the top. Also at the same time, subtracting for my riser. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six, seven, have my rise. I'm going to scribe this through straight. My tread material is 3 quarter inch Advantech, so I'm going to go 13 sixteenths on the back, and I'm going to go 3 quarters on the front. Just find that the heel always has to be slightly cut. I'll just do it now. Okay, so a riser. I'm going to cut this line, this line, all the way up. I'm going to cut this line and this line. Okay, so I'm going to. Now, this move is necessary because as I go, there, since I'm right handed, as I go, I want to make sure that my saw is square. That guy, of course. Okay. Lockout, tag out, baby. 10 and a quarter inch Makita XGT saw with the red Diablo blade. That is nice and square. This whole thing kind of hinges on the quality of your tools. Which is why anybody that gets, drops it immediately gets put on restriction. Okay, and I'm gonna start this way. I can.
I'm sure you don't want to hear the sound of that saw for the next couple of minutes, so let's just voice over. Okay, so let's go through the basic process. I have eight pieces, two by 12 stacked. We laid them out one time. I scribed the lines down the side because that's going to help me make sure that my saw blade doesn't wander. Now, if I've done a good job of squaring up the blade to begin with, and I've taken care of my tools, this is gonna be a non-issue. Spoilers, it was a non-issue. <laughs> by the way, I highly, highly, highly recommend that Makita XGT saw. There's a link in the description to Tool Barn. That is the place I buy tools from. They also sponsor portions of my channel. They don't really know what they're sponsoring. I just get to post stuff. I just like to support companies that are willing to support education. Now, it's a 10 and a quarter inch Diablo blade. That has been my blade of choice going way back. I can cut through two pieces completely. It cuts about three, what is it? Three and three quarter inches deep. So essentially I'm cutting the top two right up to the line where the riser intersects with the tread and that scores the piece underneath. That is going to save me time because I'm not gonna have to scribe each of these. Typically what we do is we cut a pattern and then we would scribe it seven more times. I don't have to do that. I'm just gonna keep cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting. <laughs> Earlier in the video, I made the comment that I'm not trying to break a speed record with any particular move. So you can see I'm not pushing this saw as hard or as fast as it could go. There's a balance with, with um, battery powered tools. We don't want to overheat the batteries. And I'm cutting quite a bit of wood repetitively. So I'm going to just be nice and gentle. And again, I'm just cutting up to where the tread line meets the riser line. I'm not overcutting. I really don't think that's a big deal, but I just don't do it. You know, I can, I can do this stuff. It doesn't save me a step by the time I'm done, and I'll show you the reason why I say that. So just go nice and slow and be good to your tools. We're gonna save a ton of time and be more accurate using this method. So, hey, there's my soapbox rant. Okay, go a little harder than I need to. Hello, I love you. All right. <laughs> Nice and square. Might as well story this, right? Okay, beautiful people. So I've got eight stringers to cut. Thankfully, that my um, stairway split in half. So I got seven rise up and then seven rise down, or down and then up, depending on your point of view. So I've screwed them all together like a blue lamb on its side. As long as that saw is square, then we will be square. So I trace the lines. Anyway, we're gonna have a whole video on this, but. We are off to an excellent start. Those guys are too. Okay, so let's just do the same thing over again, but I have lines. You're probably thinking to yourself, how do you know I'm beautiful? I don't. I'm just giving you the benefit of the doubt. Okay, so the top two pieces came off. I backed out those two structural screws, put them back in my pocket because we're going to reuse them. They're not the cheapest things on planet Earth, so let's just use them wisely. Because the top two were completely cut through right up to the line, at least the top piece, I've scored number three. Now I'm just going to work my way down the pile and essentially take two off at a time. The other thing I want to point out, and I'm really bad at this, is sometimes I'll cut the riser and then the tread and the riser then the tread, but really it's more efficient if you cut all of the treads and then all of the risers. You can see, I'm just trying to be a human radial arm saw. I'm also doing very little work with my body. I'm just pushing the saw. You kind of notice I'm actually leaning my body into it. I'm trying not, I don't know, I guess this is kind of second nature to me. I'm trying not to use my arms for pushing because believe it or not, I'm a lot heavier than my arm, <laughs> so I can just push by leaning. And again, because we're not trying to just force the saw, I don't need a ton of pressure, just a nice gentle lean in. And you can see my arm does move. You know, we're trying to just push nice straight lines. Now it is to me a little bit more important using this technique to not be too cavalier. And what I mean by that is because this cut determines the next one underneath, and we're gonna do this like what, three times total? I think it actually is four, technically. Yeah, four times. We wanna make sure that those cuts are good. Really, I guess it's the top three that were the most important because then we're just gonna follow the scribe lines or the scored lines, if you will, as we go through. 
You can also see that I did not have the highest quality 2x12. Whenever I order, normally the lumber yard is really good. I'll say, hey, I need eight of them that are nice and pretty because they're for stair stringers. Whatever happened, these might have been the prettiest of the lot. We're just going to make it work. We're framers. We just get busy framing or get busy dying. There's no point in complaining. Also, we started this Spotify playlist off of Rock Set. It must have been love. And it was an awesome playlist. So you're welcome for that one. Okay, so the second batch down. There's the first one. Nice and square, right down my lines. You know, the discrepancies that you see are just due to the fact that I flushed them up on the other side. That's life. That's just life. Um, I'll try to show this on the next one. This third piece, it only stops about here. And so I just connect the dots by eye. Because I am a framer. We, we, we can use our eyes. It's okay to do that. Oh. Okay, so what I want to do is keep these in order. Although, honestly, I don't think it matters. This hasn't moved. Right back through the same holes. I'm just gonna repeat. Okay, so we're still square. I popped the other ones off. Uh, yeah, there's four of them there. I was like, hey, I was missing one. So you can see how these are these stop short since I came right to the line on the top ones. Focus. So I'm just gonna go by eyeball. I'll put the, uh, let's see, here we go. I'll put the head mount on and you'll see how we can connect those dots. These screws, of course, are still, hold remember the bottom three are screwed together, then the top one, same hole, so everything, you know, nothing's moving. And you can see that. So, looking sharp, looking sharp. Here in my arms, baby, you're all that I need. I need my coffee. Yeah. Coffee. Starbucks coffee. Americano with half and half splash of cream. Hey, that's pretty good. I, I, you know how like you wear certain clothes or shoes and you instantly feel cool? Yeah. I feel like when I wear the GoPro on my head. Hey, you, look cool. you instantly lose all that. I feel like. It just screams extreme sport. Extreme! Yeah, they're like, I bet he's gonna helicopter ski off a jump. Yeah. Nah, he's just cutting some, some uh, rafter or whatever, stairs. Okay, so let's do the same thing again. Now, I have to eyeball. Remember how I mentioned we're cutting right up to the intersection of the riser and tread? You can see that in the background on piece number three. Well, that means that the scored piece is what? Like three, I don't know, I can't even see that. Yeah, maybe like two and a half inches each way short. So I have to eyeball that. But we're framers, remember? We eyeball things all the time. <laughs> If you can back up out of a parking spot with using your mirrors, then you can eyeball this. I have confidence in you. Remember, you're a beautiful person. Believe that you can do it. And if you overcut by a quarter of an inch, it's not a big deal. Or if you undercut by a quarter of an inch, it's, again, not a big deal. We're going to make up for that in just a few minutes. Again, cutting all the risers at one time. <clears throat> then I'm just rolling my way through the cuts. Are you getting an appreciation for why we, will, A, want to take care of our tools, and B, make sure that that saw is nice and square. Not all saws are created equal. Uh, I think there's only the skill, skill saw. I don't know what it's called now. It's a worm drive saw that is ungodly, ungainy. Is that even, a, is that even an expression? Anyway, I think it would probably do a great job at this too. It has a lot of torque. But this Makita, and it's still, I think I weighed it. Even with the big battery, I think it's still 13 pounds. So it's still lighter than the uh, old skills that we uh, all learned in the, well, if you're on this channel, you probably weren't framing in the 90s. <laughs> you're probably a lot younger than that. I'm just losing it here. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with the voiceover for now. Like right there, that one's a little short.
getting close. That battery's gonna die. Oh, okay. Be careful, Timmy. Okay. Home stretch, home stretch. Home stretch. I'm gonna eyeball to that. Specifically, I was talking earlier about a 10 and a quarter inch cordless beam saw. I think it's just Milwaukee and Skill Saw that make, make them. And the Skill Saw is just pretty weird. It's, it's balanced really weird. Okay, so we are down to the last two. Remember, I had those same screw holes, so I just put the screw right back into those holes. Remember, now, here's maybe a better view. I'm just cutting right up to the line. Like I said before, it's okay if we're just a little short or even just a little long, doesn't matter. All right. All right. <laughs> Okay, before I pull those screws, why not just go through here? Okay, let's go left hand. I wasn't expecting to get Bon Jovi with the Roxette station. I'll take it. Okay. Okay, so. Now, I'll just do all of these in order. Honestly, I think I can probably two, two at a time. And the magic or secret sauce is the jigsaw. Well, I mean, maybe it's more accurate just to say all of the saws. But that jigsaw is outstanding. Now, I bought this jigsaw exactly one year ago when I was cutting some stairs because I got sick of our old Bosch jigsaw that had a cord. I don't want to use cords. I'm not going to use a reciprocating saw. I've done that in the past. It works okay. And I'm not going to use a handsaw, which is the way I was taught. Also works okay. But time is money. Let's let the power tool do the work. We're fortunate enough that power tools have come so far that they're so good. The Makita XGT with a 10 and a quarter inch beam, you know, blade, it's a beam saw, set square, really makes this process work. But then in batches of two, I'm just gonna put the screw back through the hole and I'm gonna use the jigsaw to finish the cuts. Like I mentioned, that is a year old jigsaw. It still has the original blade. It's a Diablo blade that just, I bought it at the same place at the same time. <clears throat> it's gotta make sure that you get the right shank blade for jigsaws, and I'm pretty sure I did not. <laughs> so thankfully I was smart enough to not assume I had blades. Anyway, bought the blade. It does vibrate quite a bit, you notice. I should have put it in orbital action, and it would cut even a little bit faster. But at this point, it is just about rhythm. 
I want to keep those lines nice and straight because I, I took the time to do them straight to begin with, right? Or cut them straight. Cutting all the treads first. Then I'm going to go left-handed, cut all the risers. Normally, I would not let the scrap hit the ground, but I would catch it as it comes off and I would put it on top of the stringers. I was just in a hurry, so I threw it all in the same pile. You can see the dump truck in the background. As soon as this is done, I'm going to do my cleanup because I do not like to step on pieces or trip on them. I did lots of that when I was younger and didn't think I had time for cleanup. I also don't like to put them under the sawhorses. There's plenty of sawdust there. That's where I'm gonna put my tools. I don't need to put the scrap there. There's nothing wrong with that. This is just me being me. One other point to mention, I'm using a Milwaukee jigsaw, I have a Makita beam saw, and I have a Metabo HPT seven and a quarter inch saw. It's not that difficult to run three battery platforms at all, but it certainly does simplify your life if you run the same battery platform. I just find that there's certain tools that I really like from certain platforms, and so that's the way I end up with it. There's just a look at the blade. It has stayed nice and straight. Again, if we take care of our tools, they will take care of us. That is it for this video, everybody. I really appreciate you. I'm trying to shorten them. It's not working. So I'm just gonna always aim for 25 to 30 minutes. I could have edited out all the singing, but let's be honest, that was really the superstar portion of this whole episode. In the next part, part two, I don't think there will be a part three, but I think in part two, it will just be the assembly. Or maybe I'll just make part two the platform. I don't know. I don't know. I never know. I just film it all and figure it out after the fact. Thank you, thank you, thank you for following along. I really do appreciate it. Nothing I can say. If you feel like hitting the subscribe button, please do it and hit the little bell notification. Most of the people that subscribe to this channel don't actually um, get the notifications. But again, that's your prerogative. Whatever you wanna do with your time, I just appreciate you hanging out here. And I can't think of anything intelligent to say. So we'll just end it there. I love you all, you beautiful, talented people. We'll see you in the next video. They wanna have fun. Framers just wanna have fun. Okay. <laughs>